And time. Last one, last one. The floor is my friend. Postpartum and raising a child, whether it's for mothers and fathers, is stressful enough. So before we begin, it is absolutely vital for you to manage your expectations, especially for the mothers out there. Although this challenge is about eight weeks, I do recommend that you start very, very slow. Like take it like three months, four months, uh, six months, or maybe up to a year. So when you start this, so it is very, very important for you to track your progress. Now, the first one obviously is scale, uh, the wing scale. And then number two is going to be your progress photos, which I recommend you to take weekly. And then number three is going to take measurements, also weekly. A few things that you need to take note as well is how do you feel at the end of the workout? How are you performing a lot better? Are you stronger? Are you faster? Can you play better with your kids? Stuff like that that you don't see in the mirror or photos, okay? Um, something, things that you feel on the inside as well. So those are the kind of things that you need to track as well. Okay, so I'm about to start the workout and I'm already sweating. I've used my daughter's chalkboard and written down the entire workout set right here. Now this here is for the inverted rows. Put two chairs here, take this little broomstick right here put it on top and I get under it and I pull now next up I have the bench gonna be doing push-ups and step-ups on it now I do have dumbbells and he did say that some of the workouts will include dumbbells but as this is my first time working out in this routine uh, I will just not use dumbbells to just see how my body reacts to it working out on a holiday Ew, gross Hey guys, it's me Jenna and me Riel and we are here today at Riz's gym to continue our workout. We've been around for about one and a half months or so working out. I've gone through breakdowns, cramping, fasting months, waking up in the middle of the night and Raya of course and I've taken three steps forward and two and a half steps back so far. Progress is progress. Yeah, so for me we've been working out for a month and it's really been like a roller coaster of not weight for me, but more of emotions. Um, but it's been good progress. Initially, I couldn't do a lunge. It was so, so, so difficult. But now I could do a lunge with some weight. So there is progress there. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see uh, how we progress in the next month or so. For this challenge, I would like to see Jenna and Rial to achieve uh, certain few things. So for work busy working individuals or busy moms uh, trying to achieve their fitness goals, what realistic expectation we should set, what, uh, you know, what realistically they will get and so on. So I am looking forward to see how well they perform today and hopefully they don't die. Yeah, so my legs are starting to cramp. Let's start the workout with Riz before we start breaking down again. Alright, Jenna, let's go. Three, two, one. Whoosh! <laughs> Seconds left. Five seconds, five seconds, let's go, Rihanna, come on. The floor is my friend. So here's my update. Everything in my mouth is dry. Can you hear this? Everything is dry. My lips are sticking to my teeth. My teeth is sticking to my tongue. My tongue is sticking to the roof of my mouth. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, confession time. I have not worked out since about a week ago and I do not feel bad about it at all. I've just been so stressed with work and that gives food on my table for my family to eat and my side hustles because that gives my family a better life and spending time with my daughter because it gives me so much fun and enjoyment that I just really put aside the working out and the health aspect and I don't feel bad but I just feel so much pressure. When you are too stressed, um, a lot of things can happen while you're working out. You can be demotivated, your mind's all around. Uh, so when you work out, you won't be able to push yourself so hard. It's like the universe is conspiring against me and not wanting me to work out, right? Because <laughs> the first week was the baby crying non-stop. The second week was a super busy week at a wedding. And the third week is COVID. So initially it started off really bad. It was so, so, so difficult for me because having to restart everything and do things that I was able to do before was really, I think, mentally and emotionally heartbreaking for me because I couldn't do it at all. So before this eight weeks workout thing, I was pretty much like a sloth at home. I wouldn't move much. I would stay on my couch. I would only move when I needed to move, which is to like carry my baby or whatever, or cook. Um, but after these eight weeks, I do feel stronger. I do feel um, livelier and overall happier. Mm. You know what? Uh, based on all the vlogs I did and what I wanted to achieve, I think I kind of did. You know, I'm not happy with my results, but I got somewhere and then that's where we're going. So here are three things I explained to myself. Number one, after a really hard workout, I couldn't move for five days. So I realized it's actually better for me to work out smaller amounts per day so that I can do it multiple days in a row. That's my thing. Number two, my God, if you work out at night, you are going to be so dry in the morning. Like your lips, your tongue, like I had a sore throat every morning after like squats and push-ups and pull-ups and all that kind of stuff. Third thing, uh, it's really difficult to do uh, weights when a toddler is running around. So that was kind of dangerous. So I had to wake until Lily fell asleep. And after that, I would fall asleep. What? As, you know, the weeks progress and like I spoke to Riz, you know, initially I thought like I had to do every single day. I had to work out every day. Um, and it was just not feasible being a mom and working and having to cook clean. And you know, he said like, okay, you know, this is something that needs to be sustainable. So we tried to cut it down and we did two days a week. And I think that really helped me mentally and emotionally. Um, not having that huge burden on my shoulder, um, having to work out every day. Every time I looked at myself, uh, I kind of loathed how I look. That's kind of how I felt about myself. And I recently had to get rid of all my old clothes and that was kind of heartbreaking. And this one caught me by surprise is the measurements. Like the measurements of your arms and your chest and your legs. That made a difference. It was much more interesting and motivational than the weighing scale itself, which didn't say much. Yes! I am still very, very determined to, to lose more. Okay, we, I didn't lose. I only lost one kg, but somehow, like, when I look at the mirror, I think I look different. I think certain parts are a bit toner. Yeah, so I think definitely we'll be continuing this because I do have a goal and I'm somebody who's determined to reach that goal. Yeah. I'm doing it again later. So yes, first time ever working with a personal trainer, okay, which is this gentleman right here. And it's great because before this, I had no baseline of where I was. Working with the trainer kind of just showed me where my baseline was. And that's kind of where you need to know. Uh, Jake from Adventure Time always said that, Dude, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. So I hope you guys enjoyed our eight week body transformation challenge. It wasn't a challenge, it's actually a journey. So if you're gonna attempt this, try to do a bit more longer than eight weeks. Uh, you can go for three months, six months, or maybe even a year, okay? Try to make it as sustainable as possible. And of course, I want to thank this guy right here. So you can check out his little business physical training thing built by Riz 
or his Instagram handle, Feed the Riz. There we go. Alright, so that's all we have for this week, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.